It's not even light out yet and I'm ready to watch some mafia action. Hi everyone, welcome to Christy Reacts. If you're new here, I'm Christy and here's where we watch all the shows, movies and videos that you recommend. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Today we continue watching The Sopranos season one, episode three. If you haven't watched my previous video in which I watch episode one and two, I'm gonna link it here. But today's episode is called Denial, Anger, Acceptance. And I wonder if it has anything to do with loss. Maybe the docs or the mom. <laughs> I'm so heartless, but she's annoying. Anyway, I left it off where Tony's mom had to be moved into the retirement home because she had a small fire in her kitchen and also she hit a friend with her car. Also, Brendan, which is Tony's nephew's friend, decided to hijack another truck against Tony's recommendation. Tony said, stay away from Junior's business because Junior is getting paid by the truck company to protect the truck routes. And he did it anyway, and he accidentally shot and killed the truck driver. Also, Tony has a really hard time accepting to Dr. Melfi that he's having some feelings of resentment against his mom and he actually gets really offended and storms off. So I'm interested to see where this is going. I'm already hooked, I'm so involved. I got my coffee, because it's really early in the morning. I got my water and my headphones, so let's watch. This is such a good intro, I don't even want to skip it. Oh, I turn it up. Got yourself a gun. Awesome. More truck action. We found this truck on the side of the road. I think some kids, I don't know, there might be some transmission trouble. You might want to check it out. So it's a gift from Tony Soprano. Oh. Let's call the cops. The new fuck. Uncle Junior's been breaking Tony's balls because you hijacked that truck. You're mm -hmm. lucky Tony doesn't shove the camera. That's exactly right. I agree with you. Every time I see that, my nose hurts. Well, and then he said to tell Tony, thank you, and if there's anything Tony needs, you should give him a call. Tony? <laughs> Those fucking junkie fucks, they work for Tony. They hijack Conley's truck, I get it back, and oh man, Conley's sniping Tony. <laughs> you should have sent a clear-cut signal to what you fuck with Junior, Soprano. Take it easy. Yeah, relax. That's the guy with fuck face I remember. <laughs> I bought his kid a four hundred dollar surfboard for his birthday. <laughs> what? Oh, he's back. Do you feel a certain way about that painting, Tony? I feel like you would. You're angry about it. How you doing? Yay! I'm happy to see you back. Like you're actually seeking help. The bond. And the old tree all rotted out inside. That is a special made psychological picture. Oh, gosh. Like Tony, that, uh, for real? Oh, we're from Harvard, and what do you think of this spooky, depressing barn and this rotted out tree we put here? <laughs> what? This is a good hospital, sweetheart. Nothing like that's going to happen yeah. here. There in the line will kill you. You know who else? <laughs> Much worse than you, though. It's, it's eating his brain away. Uh. Hey, somebody having a baby or what? Hey. Ah. <laughs> Someone having a baby. Hey, you know, I think I should grab a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Good friend of yours had a spontaneous combustion in his restaurant. Put down in the cafeteria, hon. You want me to bring anything back? She's like, I'm out of here. I don't want to hear any of this illegal talk. Oof, thank God he left. Oh. He's a nice guy, but he's like the grim fucking reaper. <laughs> it's like he knows every guy with a fucking cancer cell, and he can't wait to tell you. <laughs> the Jew with the black clothes and the curls and everything. They're called Hasidim. Hasidim, but I don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> What's he want, this title, man? What? Why do I love those type of dad jokes so much? I never did choir. A lot of people in my school did. But I have a terrible voice. I was like that guy in the bag that didn't sing at all. I just stood there. Because I had to. Oh, she has a beautiful voice. Calm, you did not have to do this. We don't see each other like we used to, and I want that to change. Mm -hmm. Be friends again. They're putting us through a second arson investigation. 
What do they think? You're mobbed up? You're working stiff for Christ's sake. Who would burn down a perfectly good mm, restaurant? I mean, Tony would. To Stupid. save your life, actually. Because you didn't want to go on that cruise. Because your wife says, don't accept gifts from the mob. Come on, come in the kitchen. I'll buy you a beer. I'll buy you a beer. What would you do if your daughter was abused by her husband? Talk to him. Talk yeah, to him. Yeah, hammer. Mm -hmm. I think you understand my anger. <laughs> <laughs> What's your fucking problem, pal? But <laughs> what's up now with Fisk? He wants 50, we get 25. I don't understand. That's because I'm not talking to you. <laughs> He's heartless. Oi. The son's not having it. And you have a deal. Good. It's done. I always like the scenes that happen sitting out here. Um... Because I, they include the sound of the surroundings, which is really cool. It makes you feel like you're there. The car honking, the people walking by. <laughs> yes, may I help you? Who are we are? Well, that also depends. <laughs> are you a bill collector? Huh? What is this, the Catskills? <laughs> Any problem I may or may not be having with my family is none of your matter. Oh, you don't so know get that. Out of here. <laughs> You couldn't possibly Bro. understand what's going on. You're getting into Shlomo is an deeper arrogant, deeper trouble. ignorant control freak. Damn. Uh, look, so please, don't embarrass yourself any <gasps> further. Just leave. Don't embarrass I'm yourself. You're embarrassed? I'm not embarrassed. You're about to. That's exactly right. Now that's embarrassing. Fuck. This is how I say nothing. <laughs> oh, oi. How's that for nothing? <laughs> I'm going to hire audience Charmaine to cater it. Nice. Help your friends out. Or Charmaine. Tried to find nice things to say about that house. Yeah, I remember you said, like, ooh, it's so cozy. Did a little work, that's all. Now, if we can't score some crystal, we're dead. What? Okay, so with this... Una! There is fingerprints all over the break. She's usually very good from Poland. <laughs> so you can call Junior and see if we can change a fucking channel. <laughs> I'm the only one who has to go to work around here. I mean, they have other type of work, but it's definitely work. We want to score some crystal. Yeah, you got money? Damn. Shut up. You ain't giving them shit. Does your father put a bullet seriously, in my head? Seriously. Seriously. Since when do you take speed anyway? Forget about it. No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> What about me? Nobody's gonna say goodbye to me. Brendan, you suck. Yeah, exactly right. Bye. Hunter will flirt with anything. Isn't it better if she gets it from you no. and all that poison that's floating around? No. Seriously not. You know what you should do? You should go to Carmela and Tony and tell them that she's looking for speed. I don't know. Am I a snitch? This show is making me reconsider stuff. Whatever happened with the Jew at the motel? We reached out to him. He wasn't receptive. They're going back. Okay. I want to watch that. I think you got the wrong room there, huh? Because uh, you are not my nurse. <gasps> I know. Oh. I'm sorry, I just need to check some vitals. Hey, what, are you, what, what are you doing? It seems to be working fine. Let me just Absolutely. check his... Oh. Oh. This... Oh, this damn... Oh, what? This... Oh. Oh. I saw nipples. I got you, you prick! Yeah. You should have seen oh, your face! Fuck. You should have seen your face! <laughs> you I've been out of bed all day, honey. <laughs> I joined them later on. We got a little booze, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling her? Well, it's next to something vital. I see. You see? From what you're telling me, he's it getting doesn't mad. sound very good. And how it sounds, because you don't know him, and you don't know me, and you don't know what the fuck you're talking and why about. Why do you ask? What's happening is we're getting closer to you, confronting your true feelings mm -hmm. about what's really going on here. The tree and the painting, ride it out, you said? Mm. The fucking painting. I knew that was a fucking scam. I knew that painting was <laughs> no, a fucking it wasn't. scam. Scott, you think everybody's lying to you while you're pulling scams on them. Fuck you. You're so volatile, Tony. I would not want to see him as a patient. Got enough champagne? No. He's sneaking up. Is he going to give her a speed? Oh my god, I hope not. This is no joke. I know you and me don't always get along, this but I don't think you want to see me dead. This is the worst idea ever. Tell Brendan the hunter would rather die than go out with him. Brendan? But you keep that asshole away from that child, you understand me? Hey, the guy asked Agreed. me to do him a favor, I did it, that's it. All right, you delivered the message. He delivered more than the message. The guy offers us two tickets to the Caribbean out of pure friendship for mm -hmm. me. You won't take them, because they're tainted. Mm -hmm. But for some snob-ass party, it's all right, I take his money to clean his toilet. That's true. Don't tell me that you took money from Tony Soprano. How is it different? 
you're providing a service or some goods, like you're cooking for them, so it's a business. But like a gift, uh, never accept gifts from the mob, I heard. Someone said that in the comments. You wanna watch what you're doing when you're squeezing the quail? Don't squeeze the quail. Watch the quail. Show me. <laughs> that, again. Come over, you work for me. Get in there, fuck, Michael, come. Get in oh, he's fighting oh, back. <laughs> oh, is that an Arancini Sion? Why'd you invite him? Reminds me of what I lost. Mm have my restaurant ripped from me it was that or your life Artie. oh no he's not the one it was pussy they were trying to get pussy malanga present fucking jerk what the fuck do you know about <laughs> it <laughs> you motherfucker no don't I start a fight no jerk. not the arancinis yeah Artie was not in danger um, they were going to get Pussy Malanga in Artie's restaurant, so they did that. So I think this is totally unfair with Artie, and you should just gift him the money at this point. I should walk away without a nickel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they don't up. care. Ain't it, He's fighting back. Motherfucker. What is that? This guy's a bull. Is that it? Is that like Holy. a thing for meat <sighs> to tenderize? Is that a meat tenderizer hammer? It's not your wife. Times are wasted. I was lucky I could get out at all with that party tonight. Hello. Tony. Sorry to bother you down there. This thing isn't working out the way we hoped. You know, with a friend with the funny sideburns. <laughs> Alright, don't say no more on the phone. I'm coming down. Mm. Shit. Ruined your party? He doesn't understand that. Another painting? Haunting you? What's that painting mean to you? No. You want something to munch on? Yes, please. You know, most guys I know would be happy to get rid of their wife. <laughs> I think we got a... You know, that's why we called you. I love his outfit. He well, doesn't care. You're a stupid motherfucker, you know that? <laughs> I've heard it said. <laughs> For two years, 900 Jews held their own against 15,000 Roman soldiers. They chose death before enslavement. Wow. And the Romans? Where are they now? You're looking at them, asshole. Ha! Huh. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Good dog in the middle. Ash, I'm here with my non-shellfish eating friend, and I gotta tell you something. <laughs> I'm tapped out. I know one thing that no man wants to go through life without. <gasps> what? His peewee? Act like a moil, huh? Like a moil. Finish his bris. Oh, yeah. Finish his bris. Polly. <sighs> Transactional, non-emotional. It just meant so much to me, just having you here. You know, just made it so much fun for okay. me. Okay. I never wanted to tell you this. Uh, it happened so long ago. You and Tony, you you weren't even married. <gasps> uh, it's probably silly for me to even bring. What is why? And then, so why would you bring it up now? One thing led to another. We started dating Wait, each other. And why would you say? Why would you? Camilla, I slept with. Why would you mention that now? Stop worrying about me. Really. That is I mean, weird. we both made our choices. I'm fine with mine. I think I know what she's doing. I think I you know she's like, I could also have had the chance to live this life, but I chose a different life because this mob situation is not for me. i rather marry a restaurant owner and not deal with this trouble. Hey, ZZ Top. <laughs> the guy gave you to get, didn't he? <laughs> but not because of you. You scared him, threatened him with castration. Do you want to give your son in law 15% of the motel? You go ahead. That's it comes right. Out of your end. It comes out of his hand. Son was right. Yeah. Your mud. Well. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. I take that asshole son of yours and shove him up your ass. <laughs> Good yuck. Shut up. 
you have to hold your end of the deal, bro. Like you already promised him 25%, whether it was the business or the castration threatening, it happened. He did his part. Hey, how you doing? Oh, is he losing his hair? Mm, he looks bad. God, here's his mm, raisins. There she is. Olivia, you look twice as old as me. He put up my storm windows for me one year. <laughs> Good. He realizes that bringing that up to her is going to do nothing. But what do I do? I just let him and his felony kid piss on me in public? Maybe Christopher could use a little talking to. The other one? I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Brendan's an absolute idiot. You got idiot. a lot of sense for an old gal. I'm not afraid of death. Not if it's for something. Hmm. You know, a war, something like that. Really? A reason. But Jackie, to see this strong, beautiful man just wither away to nothing. I love seeing him so emotional, like so vulnerable. It was just so hard to see him flip so fast and get so mad. And if all the shit's for nothing, why do I got to think about it? Mm. That's the mystery, isn't it? Do you feel like Frankenstein? A thing? Lacking humanity? Lacking human feelings? No, I feel like he is now getting in touch with his human feelings and realizing that he's not a monster lacking humanity. What? Who are they? Why? Who are they? Oh, look at her hands. She's twitching a little. Listen, Meadow wanted the crystal. If I didn't get it through, she would have went down Jefferson Avenue. What? You tell Tony, they wouldn't be. Listen to me. I was trying to save her. Wow. What was that for, though? I don't know if Tony knows about the crystal. Look at her, she's sweating. Does Tony know? All through the night, Beautiful. All through the night. Nice. They did it. Oh, what? 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 Hi, Jack. <gasps> By Jack. Oh, uh, what? Wait, what? Wait. Yes. Okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. I just need a little visual aid to understand. Okay, I get it. So, Junior scared Christopher and then got rid of Brendan, which is the conversation he had with Liv. I got there. <laughs> Ooh, amazing. Okay, cool. I just got done watching episode three of The Sopranos. Let's talk about it. Okay, episode three. Um, I can totally understand why it was titled Denial, Anger, Acceptance, because that encapsulates everything that we just watched. Honestly, I loved it, and I'm realizing that The Sopranos may be a little different than other shows of its kind. For example, it's violent, but also darkly funny and complex and emotional at the same time. And I'm loving how I'm gradually discovering the nuances of this show. Someone told me that season one is a little more lighthearted than the rest of the series, and I can definitely see elements of comedy popping up here and there, but I'm curious to see if it does get darker, will it manage to stay as enjoyable or will it just turn into a nihilistic show? Let's talk about Tony's dealing with the Hasidic Jews. First of all, what a bad idea to turn to the mob to solve your family issues. They should have known that they were going to end up in a bad situation. They ended up worse than what they started because not only did they have to give a part of their business to the son-in-law, but also to the Sopranos crime family. Remind me to never turn to the mob for help. And Shlomo San tried to warn him and he wouldn't listen. And not only did he turn to the mob for help, but then he also tried to renegotiate the deal 
after Tony had held up his end of the agreement. Bad idea. Although I thought that it was funny that the son-in-law wouldn't give up, which frustrated Tony. I thought that it was funnier that the threat was castration, actually. <laughs> Like when the son-in-law says, and the Romans, where are they now? And the mobsters are like, you're looking at them, asshole. <laughs> like, it's funny how this show makes us cheer for people that are actually committing really terrible acts because it's such a badass moment. On the emotional side, Tony's friend Jackie, who is the family boss, has cancer. It apparently is pretty far along, so, and it can be operated because it's close to something important. And it really brought up the vulnerable side of Tony because you can tell that he really loves him. I'm a little curious about his character because I don't remember seeing him in episode one, and in episode two, he was there briefly. So I'm really wondering what's gonna happen there. I want to talk about Artie and Charmaine, because I really like them, I really like Artie, but the event really showed the cracks in the relationship between them and Tony and Carmela. In this episode, we really saw the difference between the two couples and their economic status, but then when Carmela treats Charmaine like the help or like when she calls her like this, I think Charmaine used that feeling to come clean about her previous relationship with Tony. I still wonder what the motive is behind that comment. Maybe saying like, hey, I see your life. I could have had it too, but I prefer being, you know, not rich, but living a clean life. I don't know, I don't know, maybe. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with Artie's restaurant fire, because that plot line doesn't seem to be going away. And I wonder if uh, Artie finds out it was Tony and what, is he going to maybe get revenge on him? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think of Artie as like a vengeful man or anyone that would get involved with a mob. He didn't even want to accept the tickets. I mean, he did, but Charmaine didn't. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens there. As far as Meadow, I didn't really expect her to get caught up in that. And I can see that Christopher's really struggling between being a good cousin and then a good mobster, I guess. I'm really liking his character. Like even when he's doing dumb shit, it's fun to watch and he's a good character and I'm rooting for him. Like I want him to become more important. I can see him as being a really important character, but I don't know, I'm rooting for him actually. And I'm a little glad that Brendan was removed because <laughs> he was an uh, he was an idiot he was a liability he was hurting the business and he's hooked on drugs so i'm not mad at it and i thought it was kind of brutal the way they killed him because first of all when you're in a bath you're in like your most vulnerable you have nothing around you you're naked and there's no way for you to defend yourself and you're also not expecting to be attacked in that moment also the way the shot was filmed was really interesting they showed his foot like twitching when he got shot and then the water the cigarette bud falling on the water and getting wet and then it turning to blood that was i really love that scene and i love that livia had something to do here. That really surprised me. She didn't say it, but she said it to Junior that maybe we could get Chris scared and Brendan removed and that's what happened. I didn't expect that to come from Livia, but like kudos to her for making that decision, especially because she didn't like outwardly say it. She seems to make these comments or hints that seem like there's more there. Maybe she's more important than I thought. I'll, I'll have to pay more attention to her. So what's next? I mean, Junior's definitely asserting his power and I wonder if that's gonna bring more tension between him and Tony. And now that Meadow has had like a little bit of a idea of the dark side of the family business, I wonder if she's gonna become more involved there. And maybe the little brother whose name I don't remember, him too. I'm interested to see that, but I know I'm jumping ahead, but I mean, they're they're getting to that age, right? Where they, they drugs are around more. So much to unpack with The Sopranos, and I can't wait to see what's next. I mean, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here with some predictions, but maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. So much to look forward to, and if you like this reaction, don't forget to like, Subscribe if you haven't yet and go follow me on Instagram at Christy Reacts where I post little glimpses of what I'm watching and what I'm up to. It was a pleasure watching episode three of The Sopranos with you and I look forward to the next one. Bye.